The headset on your mountain bike is a component that sees little or no maintenance at all. Uh, probably because of the fact it's just there, it's housed in the frame, uh, silently just doing its job. But from time to time, the bearings are gonna get a bit notchy, a bit gritty and worn out. This is how you look after yours. This is a fairly straightforward process, but you're obviously gonna need a few tools. So depending on what bike you've got and what fork, etc., you're gonna need a bunch of Allen keys. In my case, I'm gonna need a six to take off the front wheel, I'm gonna need a five and a four to remove the stem from the bike, and I'll also need a two and a half to remove the cable clamp in order to free the fork, free the controls off the bike completely. In addition to that, you're gonna need some kind of fine pick or a very fine screwdriver with a flat blade. You'll need some decent quality grease, some kind of dry degreaser, uh, something that evaporates ideally, disc brake cleaner, isopropyl alcohol, that type of thing, and something like a rag or some shop towel. First things first, prepping the bike. Now, I've got my bike in a work stand, but you might not have that luxury, so in which case, you might need a friend to help you at this stage. Remove the front wheel, and you want to remove the fork and the controls from the bike. So in my case, I just have to remove the axle by undoing the six millimeter Allen key. Slide the axle out, put the axle on the counter here, wheel to one side for now. And then it's a case of removing the control. So you've got a five mil on the top and two four mil clamp bolts on the side. I'm just gonna loosen those four mil bolts. And then just before I loosen that top clamp there, I'm gonna undo the cable clamp. So two and a half mil if you have a fox fork and then just remove the brake caliper itself as well and you want to carefully let your brake caliper just dangle there's time to loosen the top bolt assembly here on the headset now as you're doing this bear in mind that it's a compression assembly so as you're loosening this there is a chance your stem could slide off so support your fork underneath the crown loosen and remove the bolt and the top cap and you need to slide your stem off the top there. Carefully let that dangle so it doesn't damage anything. Now be aware here that although you're gonna have grease and stuff that will to a degree hold your headset components together, it is loose now, okay? So one by one, I'm gonna remove each component and I'm gonna lay them down on the shop towel in the order that I remove them so it's easy to remember which way they go for when I put them back on the bike afterwards. So off comes the top cover. Underneath that, there's a compression ring and a seal. Now I can slide the fork out. Now be cautious that the lower bearing race could just drop out. I'm just gonna leave the fork to the side for a second. Now I'm just gonna remove this lower bearing. It should just slide straight out and there's a little rubber seal on that. So just make sure you keep them in the orientation they are because that's absolutely crucial when you put your headset back together. It can be quite misleading. Everything can look quite similar, but if you get it in the wrong order or the wrong orientation, your headset can be stiff where you can never get it quite right. Now start to give things a good clean. Now, depending how filthy your headset is, you may need to use some dry degreaser solvent stuff in here. This particular one isn't too bad, so I'm actually just gonna wipe most of this away on the inside here with a bit of shop towel. And I wanna inspect the surfaces that the bearing sits into, just make sure there's no sort of discoloration, any stress marks, any sorts of damage at all. And then I wanna repeat for the lower part of the headset as well. Okay, so the headset on the bike there, that is essentially uh, just the cups left in the frame that the bearings are pushed into. So that's clean and that's ready to accept the bearings back in again. But this is where the real work comes into making sure all the individual components are sound. Just before we get there, let's just give the fork steerer tube a clean and inspect that crown race. Now, if by any chance you've had any creaking coming from your headset, there's a good chance it could be the crown race here. Now, if you look closely at this one, you see it has a split in there. So it's a split race, which means you don't necessarily need a tool to remove it. If yours is pressed on, then almost certainly it can never creak. But these ones can move very slightly. As you can see, I can move this by hand. And if you get grit underneath there, that can emit creaking. So it's a good idea, if yours is split, to remove this as well and clean that. Again, keeping in order on your desktop there. Make sure you do your housekeeping with this sort of thing. I promise you, if you get this wrong, you will regret it. Okay, so we've got all the headset components in order, top to bottom here. So that is the crown race and that is the top cover. And I'm just gonna go through each one, give them a bit of a clean and just tell you a little bit about what they do. 
and why it's relevant to make sure you get them in the correct order, essentially. So this one in my hand is the Crown Race. Now this sits on your fork crown. Now note this has like a profiled sort of, it ramps up towards the inside here where it sits against the steerer tube. That is to correlate directly to the shape and the profile of the bearing on the underneath. See how it sits in place there. Now it's vital for every component to sit in place, otherwise you're gonna end up with either play or friction, both of which are not good as far as a bearing goes in a headset. This is just like a waterproof or a weather resistant cover that goes on the base of the headset there. Otherwise, when you're washing your bike, the bottom of the bearing is just exposed. So it's pretty much just to keep that covered. These are really easy to damage, by the way. So just take a little bit of care of these. If it doesn't go on fully, when you line up the headset, these can get trapped and warped. So just take care, treat it as something quite delicate. The bearings themselves, we're gonna come back to and actually inspect them internally, but uh, I'll just give this one a wipe for now. It actually feels really good, but yours might not. So bearings themselves, you can get these from your local bike shop. Uh, they're quite often very generic. These particular ones are a titanium uh, raced bearing on them, so they're just, they're quite a high quality offering. Doesn't make them any lighter, just makes them a bit more durable as such. And you can get ceramic bearings and a whole host of different options out there. Again, take note of the shape of this. It correlates directly to the cup in the frame in which it sits. You couldn't sit the bearing in the wrong way up, it just simply won't work. And the chances are it'd probably get jammed in there as well, so neither of which would be, be good for your bike. Now you have these rubber seals that sit on top of like the compression washer at the top. Now these rubber seals can cause great problems if they don't sit in place properly. Because what will happen is you'll go to take up the slack in the headset with that top cap, and if the compression washer gets trapped or gets stuck in any way, you'll end up with a load of friction, and you'll think this has the effect of a stiff headset. Your headset won't be stiff, but this is what will be causing it, and you'll end up damaging that. And it's really annoying components have to source independent of the headset. So just like that bottom seal, just look after it. Now the job of the compression ring is to take up the slack in the headset system. Now with older style headsets, you'd have to actually adjust the cup and cone bearing, whereas you can't adjust a cartridge style unit. However, the way the headset goes together, this takes up the slack in the system when you adjust the bolt on the top, uh, so you don't get any play or movement. You want the headset to rotate side to side, but if there's any movement backwards and forwards, even the tiniest bit, that will end up to you basically mashing the bearings up. Uh, and you'll just go through bearings, and to a degree you could damage the frame as well. And then you've got the top cap itself. This is there just to ward off moisture from getting into the headset, and also just to give it a nice finish, make it look good, matching with your bike. Or to clash, depending on your preference. So just to emphasize a point here, this will not rescue blown out bearings. However, you can add a bit more grease into your standard bearings uh, just to increase the life on them. But if your bearings are shot, this will not recover them. Uh, note how there's actually a pretty good amount of grease still in there, which explains why this one is feeling quite good. But at this stage, if yours is looking a bit poorly in here, you could also flip off the, the cover on the other side and flush them out with some isopropyl alcohol and put some fresh grease back in there. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do that with this one just to, just to show you. So be very careful when you lift off these seals and then you've got an exposed bearing race that sits in between these. So if you look close here, you can just see this is fully clean now. You can see the bearings in there and you see the bearing retainer. That's basically what holds them in place there. Now, you should make sure that it's completely dry and everything's evaporated before you attempt to put grease in there. Otherwise, you'll undo all the hard work because the solvent could start breaking down the grease. And you just want to pack some grease into the cage there. You don't need to go crazy though because if you completely pack them full of grease, the bearings can end up sliding instead of rotating and they won't be doing their job. Now, when you put the covers back on, again, be very delicate with them. Make sure they're pushed into place. If possible, just using your hands. That's why I'm wearing a set of protective gloves. And give it a clean externally. We have a nice smooth, uh, slightly smoother bearing than I have anyway. It should last a bit longer. Okay, so now it's time to reassemble everything. Now I've given a bit of a clean and an inspection. Now I'm happy that I don't need to replace the bearings on this headset this time but you might need to. In which case it's pretty easy, you just repeat this whole process, 
except instead of putting the old bearings back in, you pop in the nice new ones. So I've got my crown race back in place on the fork crown there. Now I'm gonna smear some grease into both of the cups before putting the bearings in place there. Now, the grease isn't to lubricate the bearings. If it's anything, this is just a, a corrosion prevention, a little barrier to help prevent water getting into the bearings themselves and to stop the bearings getting stuck in the frame as well, which has been known to happen from time to time. And the same for the top here. Again, this isn't to help the bearings rotate or do anything. This is merely just some grease into the frame. Slightly excessive amount there, but I'm all right with that because I ride in wet conditions. Again, got to make sure you put the little seal on the bottom race in the correct orientation and sit that directly onto the fork crown there. Go put a little smear of grease around that at the top of the lower race there. Again, this is just a water barrier basically just to help the water run off it when it gets in there. I'm going to slide this into place before putting the other headset components in. Okay, so I'm going to hold the fork crown on the underneath, slide in the upper headset race into place there. Again, a small bit of grease just on the top side of that, just to ward off any water that makes its way past the seals. And then the all important compression ring goes in place, and the little rubber seal that goes with that making sure that you orientate the little notch that sits into the groove there and you'll find it sits neatly into place there on top of the bearing. Top bearing cover. Now you might want to sort of orientate this so it matches up with your graphics on your bike but uh, I'm not that fussed about that sort of thing. Spacers as before. Just want to make sure that I don't have any excess grease on my steerer tube on the clamping surface there. And now it's time to get the stem back onto the steerer tube there. So just need to line that up, slide it on. And then before I let go of the fork crown, I'm just going to get the top cap on there and then just nip it up. I'm not going to actually adjust it at this stage. This is just to keep everything together. And before I go any further, now I've done the messy part of the job, I'm just going to give everything a bit of a clean down. Gonna remove my sticky gloves at this stage. Get a fresh bit of shop towel and just clean all the residue off the fork crown, off the headset there, off the head tube of the bike. You just don't want dirt and debris to stick to it. Then it's the case of putting the caliper back on, putting the front wheel in and uh, adjusting the headset and hitting the trails pretty much. Case of lining up your stem with the front tire there, making sure that the headset is tight enough. The top bolt here is literally just to compress everything. You don't need to over tighten this. Rock the bike backwards and forwards with the front brake on. And just feel the top part of the headset and the bottom part of the headset. There's no movement coming there. And just twist the fork round just to check. Make sure it moves freely. Double check it's centered. And then it's a case of tightening your stem bolts. Now I would recommend using a torque wrench for this if you have access to one. Just gonna nip these up and I'm just gonna check it's tight using the correct torque wrench. There we go, that's all there is to it. The headset is a relatively simple component on the bike, yet it's so easy to forget about because of the fact it's so well concealed. Also, when you're washing your bike, just take care. Don't directly spray towards the lower race or the upper race there, and hopefully your headset should last you for a nice long time. Uh, hopefully the video has been useful for you. Uh, leave us some feedback in the comments underneath, and we'll see you in the next video.